So you got wastewater, and now you gotta figure out what to do with it. Well, the first step is, what's in your wastewater? How concentrated is it? And then next we have to ask, where are you discharging it? And what are your water goals? So specifically, what is your city going to allow to go down to sewer? And then also from a company perspective, is reuse a goal for you? And whatever that decision is, is gonna define which technologies you select for a use case going forward. So let's start off with the most common issue that food and beverage manufacturers are gonna to have to deal with. That's BOD, or biological oxygen demand. That's essentially organic carbon. But if you put too much of it down the drain, it causes a problem for the centralized treatment facility, and they could push back and charge you a whole lot of surcharges depending on what you're putting down. But let's talk about the different ranges of BOD that's out there and the different technologies that you might consider to employ depending on what range your wastewater is. So first off, what's in a city sewer? What's measured there, right? So that's kind of your baseline. And that's what the city is gonna be evaluating when they look to permit your facility. So in a city sewer, you're gonna be looking at about 400 parts per million, between 200 and, and 400 parts per million of biological oxygen demand. That's actually on the low end of the scale, right? So if you're discharging around that area, you're probably not going to have any issues with the city. But at a higher concentration, like 5,000 parts per million, now that becomes a challenge for the city. So you may have to consider doing some sort of treatment on site, you may have to haul things away, there's a couple different options, but if you want to do treatment on site, you can consider an, an aeration strategy, especially if you want to get down to a lower BOD level, maybe even lower than 400. Aeration strategies include activated sludge, which is the most common, and membrane bioreactors, which can come in a package plant and sit on your site. Now, both of these technologies are going to require that you pump air into water, and that does have a high energy requirement. But that air moving into water is gonna encourage the growth of bacteria, and those bacteria are gonna consume those organics in the wastewater, respire that oxygen. They're gonna grow more of themselves in the process, which is gonna generate secondary sludge. But that water is gonna be pretty clean. That secondary sludge, you're gonna have to figure out what to do with. You might wanna separate it and haul it, depending on how large your system is, that may be you know, increasing frequency over time, but there's lots of options for that. Now, if you've got a higher BOD, so if you're above 5,000, say you're up in the 15,000 range, you're gonna wanna consider an anaerobic process. Now, the most standard process out there is anaerobic digestion. There's high rate anaerobic digestion and conventional anaerobic processes as well. In this case, there's no oxygen usage at all. It's a bacterial process, but you're fixing CO2 into methane, into biogas. And that's biogas that can be capturable and reused uh, even on site if you're permitted to do so. That anaerobic process can take much higher concentrations, but it's gonna be slower to treat. So you have to plan for at least a day, if not longer in a treatment time, whereas the aerobic processes are usually much faster you still have a pretty considerable energy requirement here if you're not capturing that biogas and reusing it to offset the operational cost. Uh, but things to consider, right? If you're on the higher end of your BOD spectrum, you need to look at anaerobic technologies. An aquacycle plays into that anaerobic sector as well, but we help out when your concentrations are even higher than 15,000 parts per million. In fact, if you're facing concentrations that are 100 and 50,000 parts per million. That's where AquaCycle can help. These are very concentrated waste streams. Think about syrups, uh, jellies, um, concentrated sugar from refining processes, right? This is, that's where AquaCycle can really help you in managing these very high BOD streams. Now, once you've gotten through the basic treatment, right, it still may not necessarily be ready for any reuse application yet. After you've gone through any of these technologies that we just talked through, you can discharge to a sewer more than likely. However, if you want to reuse that water on site, you need to start considering partnering technologies that can enable that reuse for you. And so some options 
regardless of where you landed on your spectrum, if you want to get that water into a higher quality, you may have to include a membrane filtration step, right? And that's going to take out things like your nitrogens, your phosphorus, uh, will also further purify the water from a biological oxygen demand perspective, any residual total suspended solid. And then if you really want to get to potable, you have to go through a reverse osmosis process and some disinfection process as well. And you may have to do these two steps even if you want to reuse your water for industrial processes such as a boiler or HVAC, even uh, irrigation reuse. But the marriage of all of these technologies, right, can give you sometimes a very cost-effective solution for reuse on site. Certainly save you some money before you get down to the sewer.